The first thing we need to do in solving this question is label some key distances. We can see that shell 1 is centered at the origin and it has a radius of 3 centimeters, so we have marked this location along the x-axis right here as 3 centimeters. Also, the length from the origin to the center of shell 2 is 10 centimeters, so we've labeled this location on the x-axis as 10 centimeters. And then finally, we are asked to determine the net electric field when x is equal to 2 centimeters. We've marked that special location in red. Now, what you'll want to notice regarding that location marked in red is that it is located inside of shell 1. And there's an important principle derived from Gauss's law in this chapter that says the electric field is equal to zero on the inside of a spherical shell. So not only at this location right here would the electric field from shell one equal zero, but any location inside of shell one, so any of these locations, would have a net electric field equal to zero as a result of shell one. So interestingly, we can actually disregard shell one in this problem. It's almost as if it's not there, because again, the electric field produced by shell one at that location is going to equal zero because that location is inside of shell one. So you can basically just take it out of the equation, out of the picture. That leaves shell two, of course, and then another principle derived by Gauss's law in this chapter is that for, again, a spherical shell, the electric field is going to be given by this equation as long as the location where you are determining the electric field is outside of the radius of the shell. And that's indeed the case in this picture. We can see that this location is not located inside of shell two. It's located beyond the boundary of shell two. So we can actually use this equation very easily to get the electric field. And what's further interesting is that this field is the same as one set up by a point charge at the center of the shell. What that means is we can imagine that this spherical shell, all of the charge is concentrated into just a point charge located right there. We can maybe even call that point charge Q. So you want to imagine that all of the charge has been concentrated right there into a single point charge, and that is going to allow us to calculate the electric field. So we'll go ahead and do that. What we're gonna to need to do is figure out the total amount of charge that is concentrated at that point, as well as a distance. Now the distance should be easy because the distance would be from that point charge to the location of interest. It would be this distance right here. And hopefully we can see from the labeled distances that that would be eight centimeters. We simply subtract the 10 by the two. So that's our value for R. What's a little more challenging is to figure out the total amount of charge there. So that becomes our next task. And we know that the total amount of charge would equal the surface charge density, and we will see in a moment that that's given in the question, multiplied by the total surface area of the spherical shell. Now looking at the information for shell two, we can see that shell two has a surface charge density of four microcoulombs per meter squared. And then because it is indeed a spherical shell, we would have to plug in the formula for the surface area of a sphere. Now, hopefully we know from a geometry class that the surface area of a sphere is four pi times the radius of the sphere squared. So that's what we're gonna plug in right here. It's going to be four pi multiplied by the radius of this shell two squared. The radius is given as two centimeters. Just make sure you convert that into meters. So you're gonna do two times 10 to the negative two. That will convert that into meters. Also, we'll notice right now that the charge is given in terms of microcoulombs. So we should probably make an adjustment to that because we wanna be in standard units. So what you'll do is rewrite this as 4.0 times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs per meter squared. And that will change that into that standard unit of coulombs. And then now that everything is in standard units, we're gonna go ahead and punch this into your calculator. So it's gonna be four times 10 to the negative six times four pi times the two times 10 to the negative two. And then don't forget to square that two times negative two. And we'll end up with a total charge of about 2.01 
times 10 to the negative eighth. And then in terms of units, what happens here is the meter squared there and the meters that get squared there will cancel out and that's gonna leave you with just coulombs, which makes sense because this is charge. So there is your total charge. Now we can swing down and use the electric field equation to calculate the electric field at the location of interest. This quantity here, one over four pi epsilon, if you punch that into a calculator, you do just get 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. And there's some funky unit on, on it. Uh, we're gonna omit that for now for clarity. We're then gonna multiply that by 2.01 times 10 to the minus eighth coulombs divided by the distance squared. Now, don't forget that the distance from the center of the spherical shell to the location of interest was eight centimeters. So we're gonna use that, but also don't forget to convert that into meters. So it's gonna be eight times 10 to the minus two meters. And then if you look at the equation, that distance should be squared. So we'll make sure we square that as well. All right, so we'll punch this into our calculators. And again, don't forget to square the distance. When you do this, you will get approximately 28,243. This will come out into Newtons per coulomb. That is the standard unit of electric field. So there's the magnitude. We have to express this in unit vector notation, recall. So we're gonna also have to figure out the direction of the electric field. Now, notice that shell two was a positively charged shell. And remember that the electric field is going to be the same as one set up by a point charge. So in other words, you can imagine that that point charge right there is just a positive point charge. And then to figure out the direction of the electric field over here, you can use the concept of the test charge. So you probably have learned in your class that what you do is imagine that you're plunking down a little positive test charge here. And then you ask yourself, okay, if I put a positive test charge right there and there's a positive point charge over here, in which direction would this positive test charge be pushed? And of course, because like charges repel, that positive test charge would be pushed to the left. It would be repelled away from the positive point charge. So this is a way to confirm that the electric field over here actually points to the left towards the negative x direction. So if we're gonna express this in unit vector notation, then we would say that the electric field is equal to negative 28,243 newtons per coulomb. And because it's pointing in the negative x direction, we will use i hat as our unit vector. And so that becomes the answer to the question. Don't forget again that i hat represents the x direction and then it was negative because it was pointing to the left.